Okay, compound interest. So compound interest has kind of a, uh, is, well, first of all, it's super handy, uh, has lots of real world applications, and compound interest is governed by an exponential type of function. And it, it's got this really kind of, looks like a fancy equation. Um, but thankfully, usually we know all the parts, and it's really just plugging in, plugging and chugging. This equation, if you can't really understand what that says, it's A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the n times t, okay? So that's that, that r slash n is r divided by n. And in this, a is the final amount. After you've, you know, after you've put your money in an account or something for a certain amount of time, you want to know how much money you have left, that's a. p is the principal, that's what you start with. It's like the initial amount from the decay and growth uh, problems. The rate, once again, it's expressed as a decimal, so if your rate's 12%, it's 0.12 is what you would plug into the equation. N is the number of times you compound per year. So most of the problems will say, hey, we're going to compound um, quarterly, or we're going to compound yearly. That would be one, once a year. Daily, sometimes they say, well, compound daily. That would be then N equals 365. All right, so it's the N is the number of times per year, so be careful with that. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in the example too. This is definitely worth writing down. All right, compound interest, definitely worth writing down. Okay, so let's move on and do an example. And in this example, suppose that during your freshman year in high school, you deposit a thousand dollars into an account. Let's say you somehow inherited some money or something, and you put it into an account that accrues 3.2 percent interest. Maybe it's a CD or something, and it compounds quarterly. So that means quarterly means four times a year. Quarter four four times a year. So how much money will you have in your account when you graduate high school? Well, let's not forget our formula here. And A is the amount after everything's done. After the time is up, we've already put our money in, we've applied the interest rate and everything. A is the final amount. So we want to figure out what A is, and we want to make sure that we know everything that we need to know. P, that's our principal, remember? That's what we start with, and that was $1,000. All right. R is the rate. And remember that R is... Um, 3.2, but we would write it as 0 0.032. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? N. N is quarterly, uh, number of times we compound per year. Quarterly means four times a year, so N equals four. Okay. And then uh, T is the amount of time. Well, let's see. Hopefully, you graduate in four years, so we'll assume that, that T is equal to four. All right. So if I want to know the amount that I have after uh, when I graduate from high school, then I can just plug everything in. A equals 1,000 times 1 plus R divided by N. So that's 0 0.032 divided by N, which is 4. Okay, and that's raised to the N times T. Well, N is 4 times T, which was 4. And so when you plug this in your calculator, as long as you're careful, and you should probably put that... Uh, actually, I don't even think you need to put that in parentheses, but if you put it in just like that, um, and this is 4 times 4, not 4.4, 4, and then you'll get A is equal to $1,135.97. So over that four years, you put it in, uh, let your money grow for four years at 3.2% interest, um, you will have made about $135.97, not having to do anything except sit there and wait to take the money out. Um, and that's, that's really how most of these problems are applied. Just be careful with the N. That's the number of times compounded per year.